It's a place where people want to come and raise their families. It is a quiet, good, friendly place. The economic opportunity that's in Williamson County, uh, in addition to the, the schools we have, and the reputation of being tougher on crime. I moved here from Harris County from Houston, uh, and I grew up watching the news every night and watching crime after crime after crime being reported on the news. And you know, when I was looking for a safe place to live, uh, Williamson County was definitely attractive for that reason. The philosophy is we're the toughest on crime, and no one will stand in our way from punishing it. This is the way we operate up here. Don't question it. Follow the law. For generations, that has been the well-earned reputation of Williamson County, Texas. A shared value in the county just north of Austin that put safety at the forefront and delivered swift and harsh condemnation to criminals. So we'd make these arrests and uh, you know the guy or girl is running their mouth and they're smart aleck and, and you start driving north they go where are we going? We go well, we're going to jail. They go well jail's the other way it's on 7th street in downtown Austin. We go no we're going to Georgetown you're in Williamson County and they literally start crying in the back seat of your car. It is a community stance and tradition that many long timers trace back to this man, Sheriff Jim Boutwell, who served as Williamson County's top law enforcement officer for 13 years starting in the mid-1970s. In 1966, when Charles Whitman went on a shooting rampage at the University of Texas Tower that left 16 dead, Boutwell, a private pilot, buzzed the tower by air. He distracted Whitman long enough to allow officers on the ground to subdue and arrest the shooter. A dozen years after that day made him famous, Boutwell became the cowboy hat-wearing, tough-talking Williamson County Sheriff. I remember hearing stories about he would walk down the street, you know, he'd have his 45 on his hip and his Stetson, and you'd say, well, where's your badge? And he looks like a Texas Ranger, and I said, well, where's your badge? And his statement was, you know, well, I'm the sheriff of this county. I expect folks ought to know who I am. Generations of politicians have followed his lead, reinforcing year after year, decade after decade, what became an unforgiving legacy. I think the reputation is there because some people have crafted that reputation because it's been to their benefit. It got to where they just did their dirty laundry in public because there was no repercussions. You know, the same group of people ran the county for the last 35 years. Williamson County's southern border is just 20 miles north of downtown Austin along Interstate 35. As residents embraced conservative values in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, it stood in stark contrast to Austin, what had become known as the liberal bending home to the University of Texas. So that's a different socio uh, outlook down there. They, they're more accepting of, of other I ideologies, where here, this is where everybody navigated 30 years ago to get away from that. And so you look at that as, man, look how much tougher they are than, than Travis County. They must be the toughest county in the state of Texas. Anything that happened in Austin was mocked, derided, and contrasted with their perfect system of justice. Law enforcement officials and prosecutors weren't the only ones who nurtured that stance. In many ways, they were responding to a collective community standard that played out in the courtroom. The tough on crime is the 12 people in that jury box that don't want to put up with what you did in their community. Take that back to Austin. While the sentiment became ingrained into the justice system, it also took law enforcement and prosecution in a dangerous direction that ultimately tarnished Williamson County and left permanent scars on some of its victims. They were hostile to defense lawyers. There was a philosophy that, that we're basically criminals. Uh, we represent criminal interests and we're to be uh, considered second class. At some point the reputation of law and order became the law as opposed to the law and the facts becoming the law. I personally think that the system has been so one-sided, the same players, that they got lazy and it just became second nature. And so I think it was just a trust that everyone had um, and that trust never really got tested. Until it did. 
first, there was the case of Michael Morton. Michael Morton was uh, a man who was convicted for the murder of his wife in the 80s. He spent about 25 years in prison for a crime that we now know he didn't commit. It was something that I thought I would never see in a legal career, kind of watching a, an actual innocence case play out in, in my hometown and in, in, uh, in our courthouse. Mr. Allison consciously chose to impair the availability of the exculpatory evidence. In 2011, two decades after Morton's conviction, the county's former DA, Ken Anderson, was found to have hidden evidence pointing away from Morton's guilt. The state banned Anderson from ever practicing law again, and he spent 10 days in jail for contempt of court. I thought the Michael Morton case was the comeuppance of, of, of that office. This is what you did. This is what you produced. This is what your, your policies uh, produced. These are the consequences of this, of this whole philosophy that you've built uh, because power corrupts and they were corrupted. They could get convictions when they wanted to. We, the jury, find the defendant, Gregory Kelly, guilty of the offense of super aggravated sexual assault. Just two years after Morton's exoneration, Greg Kelly, a high school football star, was found guilty of child molestation based solely on the word of his four-year-old accuser. His conviction immediately renewed concerns about the county's justice system. Kelly and his attorney found information about a flawed investigation and prosecution that failed to consider other suspects. Kelly, who was just 18 years old at the time, spent three years in prison before being released in 2017. Two years later, a new judge and the state's highest criminal court overturned his conviction. I cannot undo the damage done it is truly a systemic failure. And now we know about less high-profile cases like Troy Mansfield. What do you do when you're 25 years old and a county like Williamson County comes after you and you don't have any money? You can't hire an attorney. I didn't have a choice. I didn't, I didn't have a choice. Mansfield was pressured to plead guilty to child molestation in 1993 and spent 25 years as a registered sex offender. Then his attorney discovered hidden prosecutor's notes pointing to his innocence. Boy, how exciting. And yet, so angry that they would have that and destroy a man's life over what? It allowed prosecutors and, and law enforcement officers to do less than our best work. Uh, to secure convictions and uh, I think because people wanted to believe so badly in the guy with the white hat and the guy with the black hat um, <clears throat> they just really um, they rooted for the good guy they rooted for law enforcement two years ago with a new sheriff and a new district attorney halfway through their first terms many in Williamson County thought it was undergoing a reboot a shift in philosophy when it came to criminal justice and law enforcement. When we come back, Williamson County instead faced a new dark chapter. This one spurred by reality television.
Williamson County Sheriff. Of the Office of Williamson County Sheriff. Within months after his election in 2016, the citizens of Williamson County thought Sheriff Robert Chody would help bring a reboot to the county's badly tarnished image. They saw in Chody a lottery-winning millionaire, a political figure who could help preserve aspects of a tough-on-crime philosophy, while also ushering in a new chapter. Live PD, tonight at 9 p.m. Soon after taking office, Chody began booing Live PD, a reality show producers say was intended to showcase the drama and dangers of police work. I wanted the community to see what Williams County Sheriff deputies were doing and, you know, kind of give them the attaboy that they deserve when they do a great job. Do me a favor and step out of the car real quick. But as the show grew in popularity, it also raised ethical questions about showcasing a suspect's arrest on national television often for minor offenses, and whether it caused officers to forsake sound policing for the sake of the cameras. Police! Lose your hands! Lose your hands! Lose your hands! We're gonna be cowboys out here. You know, and we're taking these criminals down. Come on, they're real criminals to take down. A lot of people, you know, they chime in and they go, well, live PD, we love live PD. I go, well, yeah, until it's your kid's head being bounced off that curb and they didn't realize that until they were the victim. Over a months long period in 2020, the KVU defenders highlighted some of those instances, several of which triggered ongoing criminal investigations against the deputies. I think Live PD was a mistake uh, on, on many levels. I think that um, Chody felt, I call him Lotta Cop, that he felt untouchable. As far as the department as a whole, I think they need to have a house cleaning. I mean, it seems like more and more stories are coming out about Williamson County. A fight between county commissioners and Chody's participation in the show played out in the press and in public meetings. It's helped build trust uh, because they are showing what their law enforcement officers are doing and it shows the general public what our deputies must be dealing with on a daily basis. But the next scar inflicted on Williamson County didn't happen in the courtroom. It happened on the street. In March 2019, Chody's deputies chased Javier Ambler, a 40-year-old black father, for 22 minutes in a pursuit that started because he failed to dim his headlights. Stop resisting. Stop resisting. Stop. Stop. Stop resisting. The two deputies, J.J. Johnson and Zach Camden, held Ambler to the ground and tased him four times while he shouted that he had a heart condition and couldn't breathe. So what happened to my son? He said he's dead. <laughs> and I asked him, I said, he's dead how? What happened? And I just, I just lost it. Live PD cameras were there and filmed the entire encounter. Still, for 15 months, there was no explanation given to Javier Ambler's family and the Live PD video was destroyed. I need to know what happened to my baby. I need to know. In the summer of 2020, the KVU defenders obtained documents and videos of what happened and were finally able to give Ambler's family some answers. We now know that whatever happened started because Javier failed to dim his headlights. This is the first time I'm hearing about that. Two days after we aired our story and amid an ongoing national debate about policing in America in the wake of the death of George Floyd, producers canceled Live PD. Javier Ambler was my son. That could have easily been my son. You know, and um, I felt the pain of a mother, just like and seeing George Floyd call out for his mama. I felt the pain of a mother 
whose son is being murdered knowing that who knows one day when they may walk up here and knock on my door. Ambler's death touched off criminal investigations, not just into the actions of deputies J.J. Johnson and Zach Camden, but of the sheriff himself, whose popularity had grown because of the show. On September 28, 2020, that investigation culminated in the indictment of Sheriff Chody and the county's general counsel, Jason Nassour, on evidence tampering charges. In a news conference that afternoon, Chody said he considered himself the latest victim in a legacy of flawed prosecutions. Unfortunately, Sean Dick continues the sad tradition that exists in Williamson County of indicting people for crimes they didn't commit. But others considered the case another black eye on the county. That's still our mission, uh, to keep this county safe. Uh, but we need to do it in a way that, that, our, that our citizens understand that we're not going to compromise our integrity, we're not going to compromise the Constitution or the law to, to, to achieve that. So help me God. Gleason is vowing to turn things around. Our standards are, have changed. We're still talking about this lore, but it's not like that today. I mean, it is because of what we saw, but then you saw an incumbent sheriff get run out of town because of it. Sheriff Gleason is the first Democrat elected to a countywide office in nearly 30 years. Williamson County is changing. In 2016, it went red for Donald Trump, but in 2020, blue for Joe Biden. When we come back, Austinites are moving north to escape affordability issues, bringing with them a desire for change.
Williamson County of 2021 is a hub of skyrocketing growth in Central Texas. Entire new neighborhoods springing up on rural ranch land and new industries pumping money and people into once quiet communities. The county's population has swelled by some 450% from 1980 to 2010, growing along with Austin to the south. In 2010, the county was still 58% white, 23% Hispanic, and 7% black. Before Williamson County boomed in population, it was a pretty rural county, and those juries were terrifying. As unaffordability drives some Austin residents north, new, more progressive residents have diluted deeply conservative voting blocks that kept war on crime leaders in office, eroding a tough on crime legacy and ousting elected officials who upheld it. Now though that we are very progressive, uh, because obviously Austin is such a big player in Williamson County, Round Rock is a huge player, uh, Georgetown, you know, all these cities, I would say that Williamson County is more of a technical hub now than Austin is. The larger a community gets, the, the harder it is to kind of hold on to that uh, law and order, um, strict, tight uh, image, I think. Dick took office in 2017 after defeating incumbent Jana Duty, whose administration was responsible for the flawed prosecution of Greg Kelly. The Republican and former defense attorney started his second term in January. We have a very committed uh, group of residents and citizens here in Williamson County, and um, I think they pay very close attention to what's going on locally. In November, Williamson County residents again voted for change in the county's criminal justice system, booting Robert Chody from office and electing Mike Leeson as sheriff. Gleason is the first Democrat elected to a countywide office in nearly 30 years. I think they were letting everyone know that, that they wanted a different kind of justice system. DAs have awakened to their primary mission to see that justice is done and to reevaluate what it means to seek justice. Residents say they want this to be a time they can finally begin turning a page on Williamson County's dark history and rebuilding trust and integrity and local justice. I think we've done a pretty good job in Williamson County of the people that are in place today, uh, at least in the DA's office, and our judges, and sheriff, um, and you know, men in law enforcement in our community are thoughtful about their job. Dick and Gleason, the county's two top law enforcement officials, say they want that too. My focus really is on maintaining that every single day and not getting caught up in, you know, uh, old cases and, and things that we've done in the past, but it's what can we do tomorrow and what can we do today to continually improve the justice system. We're put here to do what's right and the values of the community and what the community asks of us, you know, follow the law. trucks.